Hello, how's it going? Yes, I'm sitting here moving around on screen doing one of the things I try to remind people not to do, which is wearing little tiny fine stripes, which on camera become moray patterns. Anyway, I thought I'd do something a little different. I was messing with my color creating supplies because my granddaughter's Christmas, part of my granddaughter's Christmas was having them pick out some specific colors from the bags of colorants that I have and I made up three eyeshadows and then took one of the eyeshadows as a inspiration and made them some highlighters and put them in their very own little magnetic palettes and all that stuff. And I said, what the heck? Well, I had this stuff out. I made myself another couple while I was putzing around. And I'm going, I haven't done anything with my homemade stuff for a while. No, I never intended to make that a business. Not doing it. I don't have that kind of time. And that was my e.l.f. putty primer in the lightest version, which is a very white base which, depending on the type of colors you're working with, if you've got something that you really want to like just stand out and you want to try and keep the colors as bright as possible, I recommend a white base because that, that gives you something to start with. And it tends to make the colors stay a little brighter. If you want, you can use a closer to your skin tone base that'll make it kind of settle into your skin tone a little bit better. That's, you know, that's kind of one of the usual things. A lot of people will use concealer as their, you know, their regular concealer or a little bit of their foundation to put on the eyelids to kind of even up tones. Um, and then there's some of the eye bases that have come out with really deep, rich colors that are intended for the deeper skin tones, but there's one that goes all the way to like shoe polish black. Just absolutely gorgeous, solid black. And if I was working with really, really intense, dark jewel tones. I would go all over that stuff. Unfortunately, I haven't had a chance to buy it yet, so I'll have to make do with what I've got. Yeah, if I was going, if I, in this case, if I was going with some of the darker tones, I'd be using the basic beige. Because, you know, I'm basic beige. <laughs> Anyway, I've been playing off and on for quite some time. I've got some stuff, but not a lot of stuff, but some stuff that is in matte. And let me tell you, anybody who says that, that doing making eyeshadow colors, especially the mattes, shouldn't be this hard. Let me tell you, I have been working on these colors, some of which are matte. Some of them are the glitter stuff. Glitters are so much easier to formulate. Just so much easier. They really are. It's... Yeah, it, it's amazing how 
different the colorants are to work with. Things like in this big one, I've got a matte yellow down here. And let me tell you, once you get the color on your skin, it's very yellow. But getting it to this point in mixing it up, oh, dude, dude, serious case of not easy. I had to buy, and I only bought sample sizes of the mineral um, pigments to do the mats with. And they're tiny. Tiny little samples. And to get a good mat, I mean, I poured tons of the black oxide into what I was working on. That's the darkest, most stable black I've achieved so far in the mat. Not so much. Uh, while I was working with my granddaughters, this is the newer stuff. These are the ones I came up with. Yes, I have bigger pans in this one in particular because that was the pans that I bought to do the um, highlighter stuff. Because I still have the small pans, but I said, what the heck, and I put some of the newer stuff into the big pans. You know, well, trying to show them what I was doing, it was easier for them to see if they could, there was more space for them to look. So I sat there mixing up pigments and, and oil and isopropyl alcohol and Letting it sit and pressing it and yada yada. Uh, I was actually kind of impressed because they picked colors that were not necessarily what I expected them to, just because they have a range of color that I'm used to seeing from them. And some of their color choices went way off in left field in comparison to what I'm used to seeing. So that was actually a lot of fun. Just because I could get away with looking at, at them from a different angle and seeing some of the changes and that kind of stuff. Let's see, what am I going to start with here? Part of the problem I have with these two is trying to get an intensity of color especially with the mats, get an intensity of color while still being able to get a workable formula. So what I usually end up doing is playing around and seeing which ones want to cooperate 
this time while I'm playing. Let's see if this one's going to cooperate. Yeah, we're getting a little pink. I have to go in every so often and kind of fiddle with the top of the pan a little because unlike some of the people that have been doing this a while and have learned the formulas perfectly, no, I don't copy anybody else's stuff, I just play. They've learned their formulas, they know how they work. And occasionally I will get sort of a it's not really hard pan, it's just kind of a dried cap that's not as flexible as what I would like to be using. Now, what else have I been doing lately? Let's see. Been making cookies. We've been planning cookies. Jim made some Italian nougat. Now last year when he wanted to do his his experimental let's see how this turns out kind of thing. He did Turkish delight. Oh that was good. It was delightful, literally. I had a lot of fun eating that. It was wonderful. This year, he got he found a video on YouTube and then got the recipe for Italian nougat with nuts and jujubes in it. So this year, that was what he decided he so we got a bunch of mixed fancy nuts and the nougat has got pistachios and cashews and almonds and hazelnuts and then the jujube gels as opposed to candy fruit because the the recipe we got was from the guy that's over here that doesn't use the the candy fruit he uses jujube And it came out beautifully. We got some of the wafer paper stuff. You know, potato starch paper. Or you can get the rice starch paper or whichever. And put a layer of that down, poured the hot nougat over it, and then put another layer of the wafer paper on top. so that the nougat would be a little easier to handle once it got set up. I 
So we started working from there. I'm making two types of pecan pie. One of them is the current U.S. standard pecan pie that's got the um, tons and tons and tons of caro corn syrup in it, which is really gloopy and, and sticky and so sweet it can take my diabetic self in a coma in two minutes. Yeah, this one doesn't have a mirror. And we have a recipe that we're going to try out this year. It's for pfeffernus, but it substitutes honey for the molasses in the pfeffernus. And since my grandson has a food sensitivity to molasses. We're going to try doing the pfeffer noose as a substitute for doing the gingerbread for gingerbread man cookies. So he can actually have some. And no, this is, believe it or not, not a matte black. It's a mix of the last of my iron oxide in the black and two different versions of a sparkly black from two different manufacturers of mica powders. One is just called black, but it you can see the mica sparkle in it. The other one is called luster black. And that's this one right here. I don't know if you're going to hear this once I do the extra background noise filter or not, but my little beige dog, which is part lab and part God only knows, but she's, she's on the small side for a lab. She's about the size of a six-month-old lab puppy, and she's going to be 14. But every so often, she just gets up on the bed and starts rolling around and snoofing and making noise and just rolling around and squirming like she is having the best time. And she's doing it right now. So, I don't know if you can hear it once I do the background noise thing, filter or not, but she is so cute. She really is. The problem is, we make the bed, 
And during the day, with all her rolling and snoofing, she completely unmakes the bed, which is mildly annoying. Because we like, kind of like to have a made bed to get into at the end of the day, which is why we bother. And she will roll and, get, and then scoot herself under the covers and roll some more and just have herself a time. and completely undo all the bed making. Now she's run off in the background and is ringing the I need to go out bells. We got started on that a long time ago when she was a puppy. Benny and she both were trained to, we had some sleigh bells left over from some Christmas decorations that we had left on a door. It was just a little vinyl strap thing that's supposed to look like part of a harness piece and it has like three bells on it. And she and Finny both, Finny's the little bitty dog, would go up and poke it with their nose and get the bells to ring for when they wanted to go out. And we're going, we're not going to discourage this. We're just not. Now, I pretty much lost that pain that I started off with. It's, it's pale in comparison. So I'm going to finish this part up and I will go back and fiddle with putting some more of the pink in. Now, one of the things about the color packs that I got that I really, really, really like is they have different shades of gold. They've got one that's called Mayan gold, one that's called Aztec gold, one that's called Inca gold, and they are all very different intensities in gold. There are different levels of, you know, kind of like if you're looking at the difference between 10 karat and 18 karat and 24 karat. So, this one that I'm putting on right now is called Mayan Gold. And I believe that goes along with the color of some of the Mayan gold artifacts that they have found over the years. It's this one up here. It's got a bit more of an orange. This one down here is Aztec gold. Again, I think this, the colors are kind of based on what archeologists have found and what the colors of the
artifacts they have found were going, you know, showing the difference between the gold that was found here and the gold that was found there and what the, the difference was in their refining techniques and that kind of thing. And these, this one is a little bit more yellow, a little less orange. And I'm like, I can work with that. I can work with that. Yes, yes, yes. Lots and lots and lots. If I can get some of that pink back in the top there. Uh, looks like I've picked up a brush that's got some black in it, which means getting need to clean more brushes. I thought that one was clean. If I can get some more of the pink back in there but it's not going to be perfect. No perfect. I have no perfects. which is just fine with me. I don't do perfect anyway. And then I've got got so much gold on this one side that I'm losing all of my room. see at least a little bit of it. I get so excited playing with the gold that I'll lose other colors, which is kind of silly. I mean, I like the gold, but I like the other colors too, you know? Get this cleaned up a little bit, and then I'll run away and finish up everything. Ta-da! Yep, that's getting there. Pick one of these to do the underbrow thing. You know, once I have brows. It's a little easier to do once you have brows. Okay. 
Yeah, it's not looking too bad. Not too bad. Perfect? Oh heck no. No perfect. I don't do perfect. I do weird accents, but I don't do perfect. I've been watching too many strange things on YouTube lately. Anyway, that's where we are right this minute. I'll be back. Oh really, you're stuck with me. This is what we've got. And yes, because my lights are unbalanced, I've got a brighter light over here than I do over here. Because right now the window is dark. And <clears throat> I don't have another lamp over that way. I look very uneven. You'll have to get over it. Same lighting problem I've had for a long time. Anyway, yes, this is the darkest lipstick I own except for a solid black. This one's called Vampy Violet. It is an elf color. Look at that. Isn't that not pretty? Dark. But I figured dark eye, why not get uppity and go for a dark lip while I'm at it? Not like I'd do anything bold or anything. Who me? Please. Sugar cookies wouldn't melt in my mouth. Well, for one thing, they don't stay there that long. It's usually chomp chomp gone. Anyway, that's how I ended up in the condition I am now. <laughs> Round and diabetic. Couldn't control. I have a really lousy lousy relationship with food. I'm a stress eater. I'm a comfort eater. If I'm not happy, I will eat something very sweet, usually with chocolate in it, to kick the endorphins in. That's how you get this way for some people. Some people it's a metabolic issue. Sometimes it's a autoimmune issue that messes with your metabolism. Sometimes you got something broke and you can't do a whole lot of activities like you used to do, but your appetite hasn't changed. I've actually got kind of a combo of a lot of things. Anyway, yes, I'm a round woman and it is my season of indulgence, which I need to like behave. <laughs> It's like if I'm going to take all these diabetic meds, I ought to like behave myself so that they have a chance to work. 
Anyway, that's what I've been doing. I've been playing with the makeup materials, creating my own stuff just for the heck of it, dragging my poor grandchildren into it. Mm -hmm. That's the fun part, is dragging them into it. They seem to be thrilled with the colors that their stuff came out. They can't have them. They have a few days. They have to wait. Wait. They have to wait. But I'm tempted to get out the jewelry making supplies and do them one more thing. We'll see. I may do that one without their assistance. Just to mess with them. It's a little difficult though, because both of the both of the girls like these really flat tight choker things, and I don't actually have the the materials to sit there and, and pretty much knit that, that elastic -y plastic stuff. <laughs> So we'll have to see how it goes, what happens, and whether or not they like it when I get to the end. They looked pretty happy with what was in their, their magnetic palettes, though. Hey, granny idea for the win. Anyway, this is what we've got. Tell me what you think. If yeah, I did one where I showed you what I was doing, mixing the stuff up and getting it all set up and all that stuff. If you want more information, let me know. I got no problem telling you where I got all of my stuff. Most of it came right off of Amazon dirt cheap. And there is a place in Arizona that will send you small samples of things like the iron oxides and that kind of stuff so you can play with the matte material but there, there's not a lot but it's like eight bucks for the samples so, you know, it's not a horrendous price just to try it and see what the stuff is like. Don't sneeze. No, no. Do not sneeze while you're working with those powders. All of them. Any of them. The fractionated coconut oil that I use for the binder. Amazon. A few bucks. Isopropyl alcohol, 70%. Dang near anywhere, as long as your COVID stuff hasn't cleared the shelves again recently. 90% is better. 70% will work. It's just going to be wet a little longer. Anyway, this is what we got. I've got... Um, a BB cream that I picked up at Dollar Tree called New Color BB in shade Light 1. I've got my e.l.f. blush, which is one of the putty pieces. It's in Soft Peach. Bronzer Contour is from contour palette from e.l.f. Doesn't say which shade range it technically is. Most of them will tell you something. Um, I've got the highlighter I've got is AOA Studio Glow Baby. And like I said, the nice dark vampy violet is from Elf. I still haven't gotten over the idea that 
you're supposed to follow your your little cupid's bow shape here where i see all these other people going through and just going around like that and i'm going that's not the shape of my lips my lips have a have a fairly sharp cupid's bow why would i want to go in a circle especially on this old creepy mouth want to talk about a way to get something to bleed up your face just go ahead go ahead do that when you've got them little creasy lines around your mouth go ahead i'll wait i got time let me know anyway i'm going to run away and do something else for a while i may go do something over on the book channel maybe go over there and talk about the difference between my low content books and everybody else's because there's a lot of people that are doing those low content books and they're all using the stock images from like the the kindle direct publish a lot of the covers and stuff are from stock images and all of mine are and yes, I have some stock interiors for things like, okay, here's a line that says Dayton and the rest of it's just lines. I don't worry too much about that. Some of my other interiors are custom made to go with the theme of the book. I'm going to be reworking some of my, my blank books so that they're more custom interiors than not. You know, things like do my own dream journal interior, my own gratitude interior. I have discovered that they're really not as hard as some people make them out to be. And that passion. Anyway, there we go. That's what we're doing. Have yourself a wonderful holiday, which everyone you happen to be celebrating. If you're not celebrating, have fun with the Christmas presents or holiday presents or winter presents or winter veil presents. That's from the game I play. That's World of Warcraft. <laughs> they have a holiday where they have winter veil where there's trees and presents. But they have great grandfather winter. Whatever works. Anyway, one more look at the gorgeous, gorgeous Technicolor. If you're having trouble with Omicron in your area, wear your stinking mask. It is not worth it to test the system. Wear the mask. It'll keep you from sneezing on somebody else. And hopefully it'll remind somebody else to not sneeze on you. Keep your distance. Make it harder for them to sneeze on you if they're going to be jerks. Mind your manners. Don't be picking on people just because they do things different than you do. Help somebody out just for the heck of it. Don't ask why, just go help somebody out. It's called being nice. Work on it. Don't pick on the clerks at the stores. None of it is their fault. Nothing, none of it. Not your frustration, not the lack of stock in the store. It's not their fault and there is nothing they can about it from behind that register. Not a damn thing. Don't yell at the clerks. It ain't going to do nothing but wreck their day and vent a little steam from you that's eventually going to come back and slap you in the back of the head for being a jerk. Okay? Okay. Be good. 
stay out of trouble. There is no need for trouble. And remember, I don't got bail money. Bye.